Red vs. Blue Season 17 Episode 6, Self-Fulfilling Odyssey has officially released, so let me break it down for you. So Genkins is browsing through his timeline history to find a moment he wants to break. Coincidental decision is coincidental as he goes to the moment in time where Wash and Donut are as well. He tries to create a break in the timeline only for his first attempt to not do anything. And it is here that Donut and Genkins recognize each other. But before things could go any further, Wash and Carolina come in, creating that timeline break Genkins was looking for. But what he wasn't looking for was for everyone to be gathered together. After about a two minute speech from Sarge, Donut works on getting everyone's memories back to them. Genkins of course tries to deny everything, but it inevitably works and everyone's memories are restored, excluding Lopez, Doc, and Tucker. This of course leaves everyone confused as to why they're all back in Blood Gulch and in the past, which they say Donut will explain everything. And that's really the entire episode, just getting everyone restored. Might as well start with noting, Doc is dead, at least for now. Death in Red vs. Blue has always been questionable. Sister was dead for a while until they just retconned that and said, nah, she just got choked out. So for now at least, rest in peace Doc. While this episode is primarily just getting everyone restored, it was the first one that confused me. And there still is something that does confuse me. At first I didn't understand why everyone was confused after they got their memories back. But after a little while I got, oh they don't really know the going ons of Donut and his adventure and what he is currently trying to do. So I've grasped my mind around the plot, but the one thing I don't understand is Caboose. Upon arrival, he knows Wash, but not Carolina. Much like everyone, they're kind of sort of between realities, knowing the future, but also being stuck in the past. That's all well and good, but when everyone gets restored, Caboose is a part of it, meaning his memories weren't fully there. But moments after, he goes on to say that he had figured it out a few minutes ago. So that confused me. Now, you could argue, and I wouldn't disagree with this, that Caboose was just lying. That he just wanted to be smarter than everyone in the moment, and so he seized the opportunity. Much like when he lied to Church when he said he saved him from Maine. So you know what, I'm just gonna roll with that. I think I took it a little too literally. I think he was lying. But on the topic of taking Caboose literally, what was this scene? Where did it come from? I wasn't ready. No one was ready. They just hit you with the feels out of nowhere. You could see the Washington Carolina one coming from a mile away. It was building up to it. I'll get back to them soon. But the Caboose one, oh my god. It's so sad because it's like the innocence of a child. Someone who's experiencing these emotions for the first time and is trying to cope with them. I know Caboose is sort of that and he steps in and out of that role sometimes. But it's always primarily been with his intelligence, not his emotions. Although to be fair, this arc as a whole has been playing around with Caboose's emotions. Season 15 was his understanding of death, being told about it and coming to terms with it. So perhaps after having to have already grasped death as a concept and accepting it, to be thrown right back to a time where Church is alive would bring out more of Caboose's emotional side. I suppose technically speaking, it didn't come out of nowhere. It was just a multi-season long buildup. And you just gotta laugh when he started beating the shit out of Gankins. I don't know how you wouldn't laugh at that. But one of the more important things I took away from that moment is Gankins was just attacked and it worked. In the real world, they can't do anything. They can't shoot him or inflict harm in any way. But here, Caboose just laid the smack down on this man. So that theory of potentially killing Gankins while inside of the Everwen only grows more and more true with each passing episode. Then there was Wash in Carolina. I feel like I blew all the mushy mushy goo goo talk on Caboose. But these two also had a genuine heartfelt interaction. This is what it feels like when two characters who genuinely care for each other on a friendship level as well as on a more romantic one should interact and give this sort of feeling. Take notes, Ruby! I didn't want to blow my brains out watching this. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel ham-fisted because the show has earned the moment. It's spent the time, it's put in the work, and while I wouldn't consider this a conclusion, this isn't your average interaction between characters. It's meaningful, it has impact, and it delivers on its emotion. Generally speaking, I'm not a fan of romantic subplots. The only time I'm really for them is when they're capable of delivering something unique that I've never seen before, or explore some more interesting concepts, and Red vs. Blue 
surprisingly did do that. It took a little while to get to, but the whole story arc of the director and Allison and creating the AI who believe they're a couple, but they're the exact opposite to what the real thing was like. There was just so many layers and it's extremely interesting and unique in my opinion. Carolina and Wash, I don't think have that sort of story. I don't believe it's giving me something different that I haven't seen a hundred other times from a dozen different shows. But at least, and I believe this is a very fair statement to say, even if it's not that unique of a concept and it's been done to death, if you're gonna do it, at least do it right and make it good. And in my opinion, this was. I don't want to say that I don't care for Wash and Carolina's relationship, but I don't hold it in much concern as I would say, the chemistry amongst all the characters. Weird tangent, but in the end, what I'm getting at is, it was good and it was earned. Huggins. She's alive somewhere in front of a sun or like a planet. What the fuck is this? I mean, sure. It's not like I believe her existence was paramount to the plot of the season. Clearly now she's going to play some sort of role in the overall conclusion of the arc. Whatever that is. I'm not unhappy to find out she's alive. Once again, like I was talking about earlier with Doc, characters can die and then just immediately be resurrected. So she's back. This episode did originally leave me a bit confused, but after sorting my brain out a little bit and with the inclusion of the heartfelt scenes with Wash and Carolina, as well as the surprising feels trip from Caboose, this episode does have a lot going for it. Although, a lot, and I do mean a lot, of time is dedicated to just explaining things to the characters. Its moments are very heartfelt, but its mundaneness is very mundane. So, little back and forth, but in the end, not a bad episode. 